Hello everybody, my name is Tommy and welcome to Aero Workshop. I was just about to make some of these Newell Post caps that sit on top of a 90mm post and now they can be used for Newell Post or just any post that you want to put a cap on. And I thought I'd bring you along and I'd show you the process I use to make these. It might not be a process that everyone is going to be able to use, but I just wanted to share what I do from time to time in the workshop and how I use a very simple technique to maybe hold the likes of a piece like this when I'm using, say, the spindle molder and the saw. So, I'm going to be making these out of an offcut of 45 mil ash. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut two pieces to make two caps, 120 mil square, and once that's machined down, it'll actually be a perfect fit for the top of a 90 mil post. Okay, now that I have the blank cut to size, the next thing I'm going to be doing is adding the moulding detail to the four sides of the cap. Now to do that, I'm going to be using a cutter in my spindle molder. Now, as you can imagine, I'm not going to be able to hold a piece 120 mil square safely to use on the spindle molder. So I'm just going to use some of the offcuts of the same thickness of material and a piece of MDF. I'm going to screw it in the way that it'll actually hold this from twist and from side to side. And because I'm machining the cap upside down, I can actually drive a few screws through the MDF into the cap to secure it as well. So then I can actually safely run it through the spindle molder to put the molding on the four edges of the cap. So now as you can see, the cap is held between the two offcuts on a piece that's solid now, so I actually have a bigger piece to run through. And I've also put the cap in with the end grain facing out, so that's what I'll be machining first. I'll rotate it 90, do it again, and that will allow so that I have the long grain been machined last, so I shouldn't have any chip out when the spindle at the end here. So now it's just a case of running it through the spindle molder.
So with the molding now done, the next thing I want to do is actually add the bevel to the top. Now to do that I am going to be using the table saw and I'm also going to reuse this jig again to hold the cap in place as I run it through to do the cut. Okay, now that I'm over at the small table saw, I want to add a 10 degree bevel onto the four edges of the cap. Now, this table saw, the blade tilts towards the fence. So that's actually the wrong direction for me to cut the angle, that the bevel that I'm wanting to cut, because I'd have to run it on the outside of the blade. So, what I've done a long time ago was I made up a little attachment to go onto the fence that I can actually tilt. So the blade can stay square to the table and this is what actually tilts. So I have this set at 10 degrees so that that will actually give me the bevel on the cap, leaving the blade at 90 degrees. So as I said, I will be running this with the template or the jig that I made up for to run it through the spindle. So I'm just going to be running this again and pivoting it 90 degrees on each pass to form the bevel on the cap. Okay, so with a small little bit of sanding, I now have the caps finished and like I said, they'll sit perfectly on top of the 90 by 90 post. Now hopefully you've seen from this video that just making up a simple little jig or a template like this to hold a small piece, it doesn't have to be fancy, you don't have to spend hours making it, it just needs to be functional. And that's a jig that I can actually dispose of now. I might never need that specific molding and angle and cetera again. So it's not the end of the world if that's disposed of. And it didn't take very long to make it up. And it also kept the piece secure and most importantly, my fingers intact. So that's where I'm going to leave it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and might learn something from it. Uh, just in the process of the way that I do things here in the shop. So maybe if you liked it, maybe you might consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, maybe you consider subscribing to the channel. So all that's left for me to say is thanks very much for watching. Until next time, good luck.